Hello and welcome to module four inter VLAN routing. So if you remember from I remember well we just did finish the um, the video on the la on how to create VLANs and trunking them. So please save this and we are going on the next video. We're going to continue with this and create an inter VLAN routing. So we're going to add to this. So please. Um, Visit if you haven't done this homework. If you haven't done this yet, you have to go and do this first, and then we'll continue with this later on. Now, if you remember, I said at, at the last video, this PC and this PC will not be able to talk to each other because they need a layer three switch or a router to enable them to do that. And so that's what inter VLAN routing enable devices in different VLANs be able to communicate with each other. All right. So don't forget to write what I asked you to write. On this video, we're not doing the packet tracer. On the next video, we'll do that. All right. So um, in, in legacy inter VLAN routing, you will need a physical interface for each default gateway for every LAN. Uh, with, with the router, with a router on a stick, only one physical interface. So here you, you need one interface for every VLAN that you created and routers do not have that if you have more than two vlans that's going to be a big problem but with inter vlan routing on the other hand a router on the stick which we'll do later on uh, let me just go back a little bit one more these two will be only one trunk for all the vlans that are created on the switch so inter vlan routing write this down is to allow hosts in different vlans communicate with each other you may use a router or a layer three switch to accomplish this. And we will do this in our next video um, in Packet Tracer. All right. Also, um, here's another thing you need to know. With a layer three switch, a port can be configured with an IP address as the default gateway for a specific VLAN. That's the switch. That's the SVI. And also write this down. Each port on a layer three switch is a dedicated default gateway for VLAN one, let's say, for a specific VLAN, which we'll see in a few minutes. So you have, you can create VLAN 10 and give it an IP address, just like we created it for the managed VLAN. And every switch, when they go in here, you tell them, oh, you're part of VLAN 10. You're part of VLAN, you're part of VLAN, another PC and a part of VLAN 10. And that's their default gateway. The default gateway is like the management VLAN. That's all. And you can, by the way, also take a port. And if you say no switch port on it, it becomes like a regular interface that connects to a router, just like any, uh, a regular interface. And you can, uh, you know, it can communicate with any other devices as if it was a NIC. So that is a big, huge advantage of having a layer three switches. The advantages, this is, you know, the advantages of having layer three switches are tremendous. So here are the advantages. So please copy this down. The only difference is they are a little bit more expensive than layer two switches, but it's definitely worth it. But you don't want to use a router to enter, you know, routers are a little bit slower when you do, when you are connecting inter VLANs together. Uh, so layer three switch would be probably the best way to go. And it's the easiest way. All right, so um, going back in here, let me just go back to this. And as you can see, I'm going to just show you that, for example, if I go to the desktop and I go to the, I'm, I'm on this PC4, right? And I type IP config, right? I, this is, member at the end of the video, I type 192.168.31. He should be able to ping 30.2, which is PC5. He's also in VLAN uh, in VLAN 30, right? So if I ping 192.168.30.2, that's PC5, it responds. Uh, if I try to ping PC1, which is 192.168.10.1, I'm not going to be able to do that. And why? Because the switches are layer two switches. Layer two switches, when they receive a frame, they look at the destination MAC address, 
And when they see that, they won't be able to do that. So they won't be able to find it. You need a layer three device and a layer three device is the one that is able to get inside the frame. Pull the packet out. Pick it. The packet is a layer three data, right? That's why we call it a, a router and a, a layer three switch is layer three because they are they are able to have access to the layer three packet that's encapsulated inside inside a frame. They'll pull the packet out. They look at the destination IP address. They know that it's here. And, those, and the router or the layer three switch will send it there. All right, so you do need a layer three device to do inter VLAN routing. And that's what we're going to do on the next video. Um, we didn't do anything for the, uh, the phones, by the way, because later on, we're going to do a DHCP route on a router, on a router on a stick. And the phone is set up for DHCP and will automatically go and get his IP address. And this guy will get his IP address too directly from the DHCP and will be able to use the phone and PC. When, when If somebody gives me a call, I'll go through the router and it will come here. So if PC2 and I got a phone call coming in at the same time, the router, because the quality of service, QoS, and it, it looks at the COS, the class of service on the frame, and it will let the voice go in first before it sends me the data because voice is has well, you know better priority all right to set that up but we'll do that when we talk that's for a different course so we don't have i just wanted to show you how to set up an ipv phone in a land all right uh, so make sure you bring this up on the next video and that's it so this this chapter is really small just a couple of notes that i told you to write up and uh, the configuration part of this we'll be doing together in a packet tracer on the next video. All right, so submit what I asked you, and I'll see you on the next video.